Awesome. Welcome to Thursday Talks, powered by Navitas Marketing. Join us every other Thursday as we chat with thought leaders, industry experts, and all around amazing people about business topics and concepts that you want to hear. Um, today, we have a great guest. Um, I actually uh, nicknamed nickname him or call him the podcast guru. Uh, he'll tell us if that's uh, me going too far or if it's spot on. Um, but we have a really awesome guy. Yeah, really, really, really spot on, I, I'm assuming. Um, we have an awesome guest. His name is Scott Seidenberg. Um, this is Scott you got on the screen right now. So Scott, me and Scott go a few years uh, back. I actually worked with Scott um, at My New Philly. He actually did a, a, a betting podcast. We were trying to get some, I'm sorry, not a podcast, a betting show, like a web show that we were trying to produce. Uh, and he was the host and he blew me away. The dude, his talent was just through the roof. And it, it really prompted me to want to work, you know, more and more with him as, uh, you know, the weeks and months rolled on. But just to give you a little background, um, Scott is a radio and video on air personality, and he's actually the owner of Scott's On Air Podcasting Solutions. Um, and recently, he's actually begun working with us here at Navitas Marketing uh, to help our clients with full service podcasting services from strategy development to production and programming. Um, he began his radio career with ESPN Radio in New York City. Uh, over the course of five years, Scott transitioned from a board operations to an, an associate producer to an executive producer and an on-air contributor. Um, his highlights include productions for talent such as C. He uh, produces uh, uh, and he produces and co-hosts Maxed Out in the Morning with uh, Jared Max and saw the show reach number one ratings in the five uh, five a.m. slot. Uh, he later joined the NBC Sports Radio Network as an executive producer and update anchor and hosted his own shows, including Overtime with Scott Seidenberg. Uh, he has also had stints with MLB Advanced Media, CBS Sports, and the Youth Baller Network on YouTube. Uh, most recently, Scott was heard as the host of NBA Insiders on ESPN Radio, as well as various shows across the ESPN Radio Network and locally on 97. Uh, ES 98.7 ESPN New York. Uh, currently, Scott hosts two podcasts, uh, The Football Betting Show, alongside handicapper Brandon Lang, and The Football Film Room uh, podcast with veteran coach scout Chris Landry, which also streams on Twitch. Now, I had the opportunity uh, to work closely with Seth, like I said, on The Betting Show, and then I also had a chance to work with him on uh, Hit Him High with Seth Joyner. So a lot of you who are Eagles fans, you probably know who Seth Joyner is. Um, he's uh, uh, high energy, very eccentric, and I had to find a host that really matched that. And Scott came in and, and just straight crushed it. So uh, again, I welcome you all to Thursday Thoughts and to meet our guest. Give it up for Scott Seidenberg. How you doing, Scott? Quite the intro, Zach. Your uh, your hundred dollar bill is on the way. Don't worry. Oh, nice. <laughs> Making me sound uh, as great as you did. But no, it's uh, it's great to be here. Uh, I love what you guys are doing with the Thursday thoughts, uh, and just really happy to be a part of it. Talking about a topic that I'm obviously passionate about. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now we're we're super excited to have you here. Um, it, it's funny because as as me and Kevin were, were chatting. We've been doing Thursday Thoughts now for about uh, a year and a half. Um, uh, well, let me not say a year and a half. It's been a year because it started in 2020. Um, the vision of thinking of something in a podcast form for our business has been about a year and a half. And uh, when the pandemic hit, it was like, okay, we need to figure out a way to really touch people and, and reach more folks because, you know, we, we weren't meeting any one person face to face. And, you know, that's when this idea came up. But the vision always was like, do it on Zoom, do it as a video. And as we started thinking, we're like, it's still kind of a podcast. I guess we call it a webcast or a web show or whatever, but you know, there's not a much more to it than us to rip the audio and, and actually turn it into a podcast. But what I really was curious was like, where did podcasts come from? Like we're, we're thinking about turning this into that. And like I said, we're a webcast now, but let's talk a little bit about the origin of podcasts to give folks like a little bit of a, a background. Can you give us sort of a breakdown of 
kind of where podcasts came from. Yeah, well, it was in the early 2000s or mid-2000s, so 2004, 2005, when iTunes was sort of being revamped every single year or every couple of months by Apple, right? And eventually, iTunes developed into on-demand audio, if you will, which was termed podcasts. And Apple didn't call it podcasts. It was like some newspaper writer from, I don't know what newspaper, and I apologize for not giving him proper credit, but somebody termed it podcast because it was made for the iPod. It was a broadcast that was made to listen on an iPod. And that's where the term podcasting came from. And throughout the years, podcasts have evolved into just repurposing of music, to repurposing of radio shows. I remember when I started doing podcasts when I was working at ESPN Radio, all we would do is just replay the show and upload it on iTunes. So we would record the radio show and then upload it to iTunes and tell people, hey, if you missed any portion of the show, go listen to the podcast. Well, that's not what a podcast is anymore. A podcast is not just a replay of a radio show. A podcast is its complete separate own entity now, and it has completely evolved from just the music and radio and talk show industry into really part of our everyday lives where everybody can have a podcast. Why? Because you don't need a producer to greenlit it. You don't have to pitch it to a program director. All you need is a microphone and a recording software. And guess what? You have a podcast. And I think that's what appeals to everybody is that mm-hmm. anybody can have a podcast now. And we know, we know, Zach, how many people are listening to podcasts now. From when it started, it was so foreign to people that, okay, I can just turn on my iPod and instead of listening to some music that I downloaded, oh, here's a radio show that I downloaded or here's a cool interview from somewhere that I downloaded and now I can listen to it whenever I want, wherever I want. Now it's about complete it's, it's their own shows. It's completely separate from anything that anybody is doing on radio and television. The podcast medium has become its own separate category. Right. Right. And, and I mean, me personally, I don't listen to the radio anymore. Like, I mean, every now and again, if I'm in my car and I, for some reason, haven't hooked up my phone yet to it and I'm, I'm streaming, you know, music. I'm not really tuning in to radio stations. And I've, I've noticed as I check back and forth, I'm hearing less and less. I'm seeing stations leave, you know, on a, on a regular basis. I tune into a channel I used to have listen to and it's different music. I'm like, what happened? Like that radio station literally went under. And I'm assuming that that is the impact heavily of, of podcasts. Yeah, it's the, it's the world that we live in right now. We live in an on-demand society where we want everything at our fingertips when we want it. We don't want to wait for the regularly scheduled time to have to watch or listen to something. We want it when we want it. And that's the beauty about, you know, hey, this Thursday thoughts, people can join us live here at noon on a Thursday, or they could tune in tomorrow when you upload it to Navitas or or YouTube or wherever, whenever they want. It's an on-demand world. So that's what's appealing to podcasts versus traditional terrestrial radio now, and even Sirius XM to an extent, is that it's at your fingertips when you want it. You don't have to wait until three o'clock in the afternoon for your afternoon drive show to turn on because, hey, you can listen to their podcast whenever. Right, right, right. And a quick reminder to folks too, if you have any questions, just throw them in the comments, uh, whether you're watching on YouTube uh, or Facebook, we will try to get to them here. We did actually have a couple early bird questions too, uh, which we'll ask a little later. Um, But yeah, that makes perfect sense. Were you, you about to say something, Kevin? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, and I know we're going to get into production a little bit later, but I think, you know, one thing that also helps on the production side is, you know, for the past couple of years, we've been talking about how important video is for businesses with their marketing strategy. And there's a lot of people who just aren't comfortable doing video. You know, they they clam up when they know that people are watching them. They, you know, we all hear the term, got a face for radio. And, you know, some people just aren't comfortable in front of a camera. And, you know, this is a good way with podcasting to kind of get that same message out there, maybe even a better message. But, you know, without that same type of pressure, you can kind of, you know, hide behind the mic and, you know, you don't have those eyes directly on you. And I think it makes them a lot more comfortable, too. 100 percent. 100 percent. Scott, so I got some stats here. I'm going to put them on the screen. You let me know what jumps out to you first. Like what stat here do you feel is like the most impactful? 
I think uh, there's a stat that you have on there showing that 55% of all Americans have listened to a podcast. And think about that. That's more than half of the people in this country have listened to a podcast. And you can even take that further. 75% of all Americans are familiar with podcasts. That's 250 million people here in the United States alone that just know what a podcast is. Right. And then you look at the, the, the listening habits of people. You know, 80% of listeners listen to the entire episode, which is important. And we can talk about episode length uh, uh, in a little bit. The ad revenue is so important. And you can look at the, 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 the buying habits of podcast listeners, which has shown, you know, podcast ad revenue has grown in five years over a thousand percent. Right. And if you look at the buying habits, and this is where, you know, marketing people will like, you know, like Navitas and other uh, companies will come in and they'll say, hey, you know, the uh, percentage of people that listen to podcasts are X likely to buy as opposed to people who don't listen to podcasts. And that number is growing and growing and growing. And that's why you're seeing targeted ads on podcasts because it doesn't cost much. It could be a live read. It's not as expensive as doing a radio show or a billboard or a TV commercial ad. Right. And if you are targeting a certain audience because you know the type of audience that listens to a certain podcast, well, you're more likely to get some revenue driven out of that because of the people that are listening and what they're listening to, as opposed to just, hey, putting a commercial on the radio, putting a commercial because you don't know who's listening to it. You certainly have certain demographics. But you know if somebody is hosting a basketball podcast, basketball fans are listening to that basketball podcast. Yeah. So if you are a basketball brand, you want to advertise on that basketball podcast, not just so much a general talk show or any other program, which you're certainly free to advertise on wherever you want, but it's easier to look at it from a marketing perspective, the genre the type of uh, audience and where those ads can go. And you're seeing those revenues just skyrocket year after year through podcasting. Right, right. The ability to do that sort of targeting uh, because you know who's consuming that content is is great. We, we literally had a, a chat with um, someone in our local area who has a local newsletter and they're considering shifting to a podcast sort of a platform. And, you know, I, I told them that, I said, that's a great idea. Because, you know, you're going to be able to cap capture listeners differently than you are through the newsletter. Not everyone is going to read the newsletter. And again, not everyone's going to listen to a podcast. But if you're trying to hit the most amount of people, you have to be on these different mediums. And, you know, podcasts is, is I don't know if I would say it's the most popular one right now. But if not, it's it's definitely the fastest riser. And it's uh, that seems to be the direction it's heading. And, and what's great about the podcasting medium is that, like I mentioned how it's on demand, you can always rewind it. Mm -hmm. It's not like live radio where if you're telling a story, you kind of have to reset and remind people what you're talking about because you're going to go off on tangents. You're going to talk about different things. Something else is going to come up. Mm -hmm. The storytelling process is completely different on a podcast because if somebody missed something, they could always rewind it and listen back and hear it again. You don't have to constantly remind people what you're doing and resetting and say, hey, we're talking about this right now, uh, and, and then try to hold people's attention spans on radio. It's different because with its, when it's on demand in podcast form, it's not about holding their attentions. It's about just providing the content and letting them consume it on their own terms. Right, right, right. Um, so let's get into this. Let's tell folks a little bit about different types of podcasts. So these were kind of the three that you mentioned um, as sort of your primary types. Can you give us kind of a, a breakdown on, on the differences? I, I think it seems obvious, but it, it isn't as obvious. Yeah. And, and we can go even further. There, there's so many different types of podcasts, mm -hmm. right? And, and I say daily. Daily is just a different way of saying, you know, like short form, fast paced, inf information based 
Uh, you think of podcasts like uh, the New York Times podcast, The Daily, which is one of the most popular podcasts out there. ESPN actually does one now called the ESPN Daily. These are short, fast-paced daily podcasts that are just straight information. They're going to give you the news, what you need to know, and, and it kind of supplements your reading the newspaper. People listen to The Daily by The New York Times as opposed to reading the New York Times. You know, you get on the train or the bus when when we were commuting to the office and you listen to the New York Times, the, the daily podcast, you got all the news that you need for the day and right. you don't have to read the paper anymore. Right. Um, so that's just one example of a podcast type or genre. Uh, interviews, you can have podcasts that are just long form interviews. You know, you look at like the Joe Rogan, right? Joe Rogan gets a different guest on every single episode and that's each podcast episode is just another guest. And those podcasts are going to be longer. Uh, it's going to be a free-flowing conversation. You're going to get into things with that guest. But it's more about that guest, not about you as the host or right. your podcast. You're getting the guest on for a certain reason. You're telling their story. You're asking them the questions. You're interviewing them for the topic that you want your podcast to be about. You could also have uh, – there's talk show podcasts, which you know can be like a radio show. Think of your morning drive show or your afternoon drive show. It's going to be the same format, except it's just going to be in podcast form. You can have a conversation roundtable podcast, like just you and your boys sitting around the bar, having a couple of beers, Those talking about my favorites. whatever topic <laughs> you want. You know, roundtable podcasts are extremely popular. Uh, and then there's, you know, a couple of years ago, and I'm probably, you know, it's probably more than that now, uh, the episodic podcasts became extremely popular. True crime podcasts became the world. Serial took people, just blew their minds. And what think about this. When they first started that, it, it was basically, they thought it was going to be like an audio book. And, and that's what it was. And instead of doing an audio book, they decide we can make this a podcast series, which with each episode essentially being a chapter of this story. Right. And, and when you listen to Serial, it's unlike any other podcast. Well, now it's like a million podcasts because so many people have tried to copy it. But you would, they would begin each episode by saying, you know, hey, previously on Serial, and they would recap what you what you missed or what you needed to know from the last episode. Right. Right. And it was episodic. <laughs> Every episode was a different chapter in the story telling one story. And that's become its own genre of podcasts. And we've seen millions of podcasts like that. Where instead of being, you know, an audio book or a, you know, a novel, it becomes a podcast series. Gotcha. We've also seen podcasts develop from, uh, or I should say shows develop from podcasts where they start as just two people kicking it around and, or comedians telling a story. And the next thing you know, it becomes a, a TV show. Uh, we've seen that happen with certain podcasts. Right. Um, we, right. you know, that's a great point. Uh, Daryl Lee springs up. You can listen at different speeds. Uh, the podcast apps, whether you use Apple or Spotify or Google, you can listen at your desired speed. One times is just the normal speed. One and a half times is very popular because you can listen to a 40 minute podcast episode in about 30 minutes. Yeah. I'll admit that's not for me. <laughs> I tried it. Well, one and a half is not bad. It's not. It, think about it as like a bunch of New Yorkers like myself talking, as opposed to uh, somebody from the South talking. Now, if you listen at two times speed, that's you probably get lost right. and don't even dare try listening at half speed because right. then it becomes something like this. But it's the listener preference, right? People can listen, however, you know, whatever speed their preference is, uh, whatever they want to listen at. But yeah, those are just some of the examples of the different types of podcasts that have become popular over the years. Let me ask you this. Uh -huh. um, I, I had the last one on there as a uh, video, um, mm -hmm. a video podcast. Now, once you start getting into something that is video centric, is it even a podcast anymore? Or would you say this is now something different? It's a different genre. It's still a podcast. It's not the pure sense of the term from the you know where it originated, which is people listening on their iPods, obviously. Uh, video podcasts have become popular because it adds another outlet for you to cons for you to consume, right? You can put it as a podcast audio only. And people can listen to it on Apple, on Google, on Spotify, Stitcher, wherever they get their podcasts from. 
You can also upload it to YouTube where people can view it whenever they want, wherever they want. And you can also stream it live to platforms like Twitch, which have become extremely popular these days. So just adding video, adding a video component to your podcast doesn't necessarily take away from the content or the style of conversation that you're going to have or the mm -hmm. way that you're going to format the flow of your show. It's just adding a visual element and also other outlets for people to consume it. Gotcha. 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 Um, again, folks, you're, you're getting some great uh, podcasting knowledge here. Um, so make sure you're asking any questions you have. Just throw them in the comments. We'll bring them into the show. Uh, and now let, let's dive a little bit into podcasting for business. Um, and, and the first thing I always think people might shy away from is they think they don't sound right for a podcast. Not everyone's going to sound like Scott. Like, I feel like I'm listening to a podcast talking to him right now. Um, but let's jump into that a little bit in terms of podcasting and how that can help small businesses. What would you say some of those those main benefits are, Scott? Well, it would be reaching a different audience. Right. You want to get your voice out there and you want to get your personality out there and really your brand. You want brand exposure and you're only limited by being a small business to what you do advertising wise. Right. Word of mouth advertising like that, you know, at t commercial uh, or you're putting stuff on social media or you're advertising in the local papers or you know flyers or whatever. That's all you're limited to. By adding a podcast, you are now opening up an entire new avenue to reach an audience. And it might be an audience that you would have otherwise had no chance or no business even reaching. Because podcasts, once you have a podcast and it's available on all these platforms, people can find it even if they're not searching for you. If you have a, let's say, a real estate business and you want to host a podcast talking about Hey, the trials and tribulations of being a realtor and what I go through on a daily basis, showing houses and, and the market. And then you want to talk about mortgages and all this stuff. That's great. Well, somebody that has no idea who you are or where you are and probably lives in a state thousands of miles away might be on their podcast app looking for a real estate podcast. And they're not looking for you, but they found you. And that's how networks and relationships are built by expanding your reach beyond any place that you would have normal reach. And that's what a podcast does. A podcast gets your voice out there because you have to understand as a business owner, as an operator, you have something to bring to the table. We need you to be able to tell that story and tell it to more people than you're already telling it to. And I think that's a great benefit of having a podcast for your business. Right. Right, right. Um, let's dive a little bit into your selection process for podcasts for businesses. I think some people struggle a lot with, all right, I love the concept of doing a podcast, but what the heck am I going to talk about every week or every month or whatever? So like, what's a good way for people to figure out how am I going to figure out what to talk about? And then, you know, maybe dive a little bit into why you would have guests. Well, you want to explore, first of all, Who's your target audience? Who is listening to this podcast? Who do you want to listen to this podcast? Whatever business you have, you have to determine that. Who do you want to listen to this podcast? Uh, I work with uh, a few different CPA firms and do podcasts for them. And they want to, you know, one of them wants to target just um, business professionals, people in the tax world, business owners. But then I have another client that want, that is a Christian based firm. And they want to target Christian business owners, okay? Faith, they want to target the faith-based community. Well, obviously, their topics are going to be different than the topics of my other CPA. Two, two CPAs, two people talking about business and taxes, but two separate target audiences. So those topics are going to be different. One podcast is going to talk about business formation structure, whether you should be an LLC or an S-Corp or a C-Corp. And the other one's going to be talking about how you can take lessons from the Bible and transfer that to lessons in growing your business. So identifying your target audience is the main thing in determining the topics that you're going to discuss on your podcast. And as far as guests are concerned, guests are a great way to add more information that you don't have onto your podcast so that you can relay that information to your Exhibit audience. Exhibit A. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, but also, uh, there's a, there's an added benefit to having a guest on your podcast, and it's something in the podcast uh, world that's referred to as credibility hacking. And what that means is it's a way to gain exposure for yourself by utilizing the guest's exposure. So let's say you have a podcast, you have a business. This is this is your episode. You don't you don't have a lot of followers, okay? Across social media, you're, you're reaching a couple thousand people. That's about it. You bring a guest onto your show that has a larger following, maybe a following in a different genre. Maybe their social media reach is five times more than your social media reach. Well, now you are hacking their credibility. Not only are you utilizing them for them to promote you to their audience and bring attention to you. So you're reaching five times as many people as you would normally reach on social media, or you're reaching a completely different audience that you would not normally reach because right. that guest is promoting it to their people. But also it's making you look better. It's giving you credibility because you have this guest on your podcast and this guest would not just go on anybody's podcast. So you have to be somewhat of an important figure, right? And so that, that's a, a good way of kind of utilizing a guest for multiple advantages, to get the information out that you don't have, to reach an audience that you don't have, and to raise your level of credibility based on the guest's level of credibility. I think, uh, first off, that's awesome. Uh, I definitely jotted down uh, credibility hacking. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to become one of the best credibility hackers. Yeah, there is. Hack. Think about it from like a sports perspective, right? Like if you are uh, an aspiring, you know, podcaster or sports broadcaster or whatever, and you don't have a big following, you're you're an Eagles fan, you want to talk about the Eagles. So guess what? You find a way to get in touch with Seth Joyner. Like we have, you know, hit him high with My New Philly. And you get Seth Joyner on your podcast. Next thing you know, People look at you as like you 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 obviously might be somewhat of a respected person because why would Seth Joyner go on your podcast? Mm -hmm. And so even if they don't know you, they automatically respect you, right? Because of the guest that you had on your podcast, right, right, right. And one more thing I'll throw in towards um, topic selection. Uh, I really recommend when you are doing a podcast, you're creating this podcast to. Think of like those top five to 10 questions that you get asked on a regular basis, things that your customers uh, or potential customers seem to always wonder about. And you can make each one of those topics its own podcast, mm -hmm. doing a deep dive into it, using examples. Um, I think that's a great way to come up with what the heck am I going to talk about? And I think the really cool thing is after you've done that, let's say you've mapped out 10 things. Once you start producing those podcasts, you'll notice other questions will develop from you going and doing these deeper dives. You might generate another 10 podcasts based on the first 10 you did. Um, so I think that's a really good tool to use in terms of trying to grow um, your, your and, topics. And Zach, I, I think that that's just great content strategy in general. Um, you know, when, when we talk to clients about, you know, what should I put on my blog? What should I put on my videos? You know, what should I email marketing or social media posts be about? I mean, that, that's what we always say, right? You know, what, what questions are you getting? What, what, what does your audience tell you they want to know? And that, you know, that, that's easy. That's, that's the content you need to create, you know, because you know that there's a demand for it already. I'm, I'm glad you linked those two because I kind of internally always felt like even though podcasts are kind of the evolution of radio, I kind of felt like it was really the evolution of blogs because like I really hated reading blogs. But mm -hmm. like when you read the blog to me, and I could hear it. It's like like an audio book. Like I would enjoy it that much more. Um, and you know, we've done blog posts where we then create the video where we're basically just explaining the content that's in the blog. You know, I, I love the, the the topic we covered. You know, a couple slides ago when we were talking about doing the video podcasts while you're doing the podcast. Like, how easy is that? You're you're not really doing anything differently other than having a camera set up as well, so, or maybe a couple cameras set up. But you know, you're not putting much additional effort into it, you know, but here you are hitting two different platforms. You know, we, we talked about the statistic, 55% of people have, have listened to a podcast, which is awesome, but you know, glass, glass half empty, that's 45% of people who haven't, but now all of a sudden you put a camera in the room and are you now reaching 70%, 80% instead of 55, you know, that's, right. that's no. incredible. 
You know, and and we'll, and we'll push thing. back on that just a tiny bit, simply because mm -hmm. having worked in video, I know for a lot of people, when that camera turns on, it changes the whole game. Yeah. They say camera will suck. Darylise, I think you're you're on us watching with us. I know we did a video podcast before. Um, it's totally different than doing audio only because it's there's there's an energy suck that cameras can do to you. And if you're not you're not trained and you're not skilled, and a guy like Scott, he's comfortable in front of the camera, but I'm not. Like, well, also there's this, no there's I'm no editing too. And Zach, I tell people all the time when I record podcasts, I'm like, feel free to stop and start. I'll take care of it. You know, you, you want you got you want to catch your breath, or you want to catch your gather your thoughts. Just stop. I, I'll edit it. Don't worry about it. You can't do that when you're on video. Video you, and, and as great as people like yourself at, at editing video are. There's, there's a certain live element to it where it's a lot more difficult to edit that video as opposed to just editing an audio podcast. You can stop and start whenever you want recording a podcast. Right. You can cough. You can mess up. You can mispronounce something and just go back and change it. <laughs> you, right. can't, you can't really do that. Uh, with <laughs> the video. And going back to the blog thing, Kevin, I think what's interesting now is what you're seeing is there is actually a market for the reverse translation for podcasts that are now being transcribed and published as blogs. And it's not so much the blog becoming the podcast, it's the podcast becoming the blog, where you just take the transcript of your podcast and print it out for people to read if they want. It's that That's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I'm digging that. Everything comes around full circle, right? And um, you know, when it, when it comes, you know, going back into that marketing world, that search engine optimization, you want that text on the website, you know? The, the bots, yeah, the, the crawlers and the bots. I mean, they like seeing that you have video on your site. They like seeing you have links to podcasts on your site. You know that that adds value, but they don't necessarily know exactly what the content of that podcast is mm -hmm. going to be. Now, all of a sudden, you start transcribing some of the copy, and you know the bots know what they're advertising. So that you know, it, it all it all interlinks. It all relates back to each other. Indeed, indeed. Um, another thing we had on here was where to distribute. Um, speak a little bit on that for us, uh, Scott. Well, you want to make sure that you're on the major podcast platforms, which are Apple, Google, and Spotify. Those are the three big ones. Uh, Stitcher was bought out by Sirius XM, but you know, they still operate, you know, you can still upload to there, whatever. Every podcast is going to have an RSS feed. Uh, your RSS feed is what is going to go out to all of the platforms. And it's your job to then upload that feed to each respected platforms. It's very, it's a very simple process. If you know what you're doing, um, there are services out there like myself who will do it for you uh, and make sure that you're on the other platforms. For example, um, when I look at a podcast that I have uh, distributed, right, and it's not just on the uh, you know the basic ones, there are thousands of podcast platforms globally that you might have never heard of certainly i've never heard of but by virtue of being on one you have access to being on the others like apple will kick out your podcast your rss feed to a number of other podcasts uh, i guess if you want to call them platforms um there are also global platforms like um I'm try, I, the names are, are skipping my mind right now i can pull them up but that are based out <laughs> that are based out of india and asia that are huge podcast platforms and so it's it, it's interesting when i look at some of the analytics of podcasts that i distribute i see where the listeners are and i'm like wow we got listeners overseas uh and that's interesting because they're they might be getting it on a different platform obviously the big ones apple spotify google Amazon has now jumped into the podcast space. So you want to make sure that you're on Amazon. Uh, and then there's other ones, Player FM, Podcast Index, Deezer, Ghana, which is an Indian uh, podcast, Savin, um, TuneIn Radio, TuneIn. You can upload your podcast to TuneIn. I mentioned, oh, yes. I mentioned Stitcher, uh, Pocket Casts are another one, Podchaser. These are all different types of podcast platforms that allow you to obviously maximize your reach. Now, Clearly, no one's downloading all these. No one got a phone with 15 podcast channels. So, like, mm -hmm. are you targeting certain individuals based on which platforms you're on? Like, like clearly, the big ones you said, those are ones that are most used. But, like, yeah. what would be the value of taking your time and putting it on 
this other obscure platform? Like, is there just a certain demo that uses that? Just the reach. Why not? Why not give yourself if it's as simple as a click of a button or, or, or you know, clicking a link and then typing in something? Why not maximize your exposure? What's there's no there's nothing there's no negative that can come out of putting yourself on any other platform. If anything, it's just going to maximize, uh, you know, Kevin mentioned search engine engine optimization. It'll maximize your your reach. If somebody's just Googling a podcast or Googling your name or Googling your your topic, well, it might come up because it's on some obscure platform that you've never heard of. Well, uh, I'm looking at it right now. So like a, a platform like Deezer, I've never heard of it, okay? But they advertise that they have 14 million active listeners in 180 countries worldwide. Hey, I'll put my podcast in front of 14 million people. Why not? Right. I've never heard of you. You know, but hey, if there's somebody in Australia that's going to listen to my podcast and then all of a sudden, you know, maybe they share it with somebody or maybe they have a connection somewhere well, and they and they tell two friends and they tell two friends and they tell two friends. Well, I guess that's what I was getting at <laughs> was like, you know, if that's a podcast platform that originated in Australia and 75 percent of their viewers or listeners are Australian, that's that differentiator between that platform and like the next one. So I was just curious if some of them have like specific demographics that are unique to them that make it like all right well you know i'm doing a, a podcast on meat pies and i specifically want australia to hear it so i'm gonna make sure i get that on that particular platform that's, i just want to know if there was like a difference between the different ones in that sort of a way um i just know that ghana is an indian uh production uh, indian um company that that's like the leading indian music uh platform savin or uh, Geo Savin is also another Indian one. They distribute a bunch of like Bollywood stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it, those are, you know, aside from that, everything's kind of similar. You know, like I said, TuneIn, Stitcher. The, the big ones, though, you really want to be on and actually have to be on are Apple, Spotify, Google. And I would elevate Amazon into that now because of smart speakers. Gotcha. Right. Um, you can simply just ask, and I'm not going to say it loud because my device is next to me, but you can ask Alexa to play uh, a, a certain podcast and she will. Um, you can ask Siri, uh, and I'll just mute my phone before she picks up, uh, that, to play a podcast and, and they will. So right. being on those major platforms and, and we've seen Spotify, which actually purchased Gimlet Media. Gimlet was a huge podcast uh, company that Spotify purchased for, I don't know, 200 something million dollars. And they have some of the most popular podcasts in the world. And that's why you're seeing a company like Spotify give Joe Rogan millions and millions of dollars and giving, you know, Bill Simmons from the ringer and his podcast network, all these millions of dollars to be exclusive to their company. And when, when I say exclusive, you can still listen to their podcast across other platforms, but you won't get every episode and you won't get the newest episodes. So a company like Spotify doing exclusives is part of their business model to kind of attract people to their platform as opposed to going somewhere else. No, that makes uh, that makes complete sense. Um, we did have some comments come in uh, regarding this last topic, which I think is extremely important, and that is promotion. Um, and, and I'll do promotion in two ways. One, promoting your podcast mm -hmm. so that people hear it, but then also getting people to uh, getting promotion or I should say advertisements onto your podcast. So basically uh, monetizing uh, your podcast. So let's kind of speak to, to both of those. So prom uh, social media is really, you know, the, the predominant way to go, right? Uh, we've seen the boom in social media and it's not just the Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Uh, LinkedIn has become huge over the past several years, especially if you're a business wanting to promote your podcast. You want to make sure that you're doing some sort of LinkedIn promotion. All of these social media platforms allow you to do somewhat of targeted ads. Um, you can pay a little bit to kind of get your post in front of a certain demographic. Uh, so really, social media is a huge way of advertising your podcast and, right. and really and word of mouth. You know, I joked about it before, but you want people to listen to the podcast and refer their friends to that podcast. The other thing that you have to be sure of, and it sounds, you hear it all the time when you listen to podcasts and you think that they're just saying it for a reason, 
But when you hear someone say, be sure to be sure to rate and review our podcast, right? Subscribe, rate and review wherever you get your podcasts from. Those ratings and those comments are very important to tricking the algorithms that come with Apple and Google and uh, Spotify. Because right. the more ratings that you get, the more comments, more so, more so reviews like comments, as opposed to actually people clicking five stars, that's going to get you to be elevated on top of the charts. So you're not gonna you can have you can have a, a you know fifteen thousand downloads an episode, which is a you know a, a great number. You know you're not gonna get rich off of it, but it's a pretty good number that you should be able to monetize. I people I always say you know if you 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 should be able to sell a company on twenty five dollars per thousand listeners. That's kind of been like an industry standard, right? Uh, you want me to do a live read for whatever company you are. Uh, my my podcast averages five thousand downloads. It's twenty five dollars per thousand downloads. You, you make one hundred twenty five bucks an episode, whatever. Uh, that's that's kind of like a going rate that people throw out there. Obviously, different podcasts charge differently, but that's what's been kind of a standard over the like past industry year. average. Yeah. Uh, so let's say you have a podcast that gets fifteen to twenty thousand downloads. It's great. You, you have a good listener base. You don't see yourself anywhere on the iTunes charts. Or now Apple Podcast charts because it's not iTunes anymore. Uh, you're not anywhere on there. Why? Because you don't have engagement. You might have people clicking five stars, and that's great, but no one's leaving any reviews. So if you can ask your listeners, which is the best way to do it, just ask them, hey, if you like this podcast, give us a review. Give us a rating. And getting people to not just click on five stars, but also type up a little review, as little as it is, you know, hey, these guys are great. Period. Done. It's going to help trick the algorithms to get you to climb up the charts. And then once you're on the charts, now you're exposing yourself to a whole different audience that are people that just scroll up and down those genres and try to find a podcast and they see your artwork, they see your name, they click on it. Next thing you know, you have a new podcast listener. Nice. Interesting. I think... I think that's really, really important. I mean, even, and let me ask you this too, does it need to be a review or could it just, it, it, even just like a regular comment? So someone- Any comment, any, 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 any interaction is going to be positive for you. Gotcha. So even if somebody, you know, somebody, even if somebody writes something negative, whatever, you, you just want interactions. You want people to interact with your podcast, not just click on it and listen to it. Cause that's great. It's great that they click on it and listen to it. But the more people that rate and review- it's going to go a long way into helping you grow. Awesome information. Um, another question uh, I have is kind of stemming off that in relation to advertising. What's kind of the best way to go about it in terms of structuring it? So I understand, you know, pricing wise, you're around $25 per thousand listens, but is it like best to do it as a read at the top of the podcast? I guess different so rates if it's in the front or the middle. So I would say, and that pricing is could be for a, a different number of different things. That pricing could just be for uh, a title sponsor, and you could charge differently for a title sponsor. What's a title sponsor? Well, a title sponsor is this is Thursday. Th this this show is Thursday Thoughts, brought to you by this company. That's a title sponsor. You're going to read that every time you read the title of your podcast. Right. Thank you for listening to Thursday Thoughts brought to you by whatever. That's your that's your title sponsor. You could then do different sponsorships throughout the show where you could have a, um, a, a promo code based sponsorship, which is only good if you get people to actually use that promo code. Right. Because you're not going to get paid unless people go to that website and use your promo code. And you hear that all the time throughout these podcasts. Hey, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get back to the podcast in just a second, but let me just tell you about, you know, blank, blank mattress that I've been sleeping on. It's fantastic. Go to blank mattress, whatever.com and be sure to use the promo code Scott for, you know, 25% off your order. Well, you're only going to get paid on the amount of people that go to that promo, that go to that website and use your promo code. Okay. Right. Uh, and then there's others that are just, like I said, the fees would just be for something that's completely like a, a, an ad that's read throughout your podcast or pre-produced and put in to your podcast. Sort of what we would call a, uh, a mid roll. A mid roll is an advertisement that gets put in the middle of your podcast somewhere. You can have a pre-roll, you can have a mid roll and you can have an end roll. 
Those are the different types of advertising inserts that you put into a podcast. A pre-roll, just like the name says, it's before your podcast. People click on play. Before your podcast starts, there's a 15-second commercial. And then your podcast starts. Okay. And that could be a presenting sponsor. It could just be, you know, something uh, you click on. Hey, I want to listen to Thursday Thoughts. Let me click play. And it's a little music and it says, Thursday Thoughts is brought to you by whatever company. Be right. sure to go to whatevercompanywebsite.com and stay tuned for more Thursday Thoughts. And then, boom, your podcast starts, right? And there's your pre roll. Your mid roll is in the middle of your podcast. You're going to insert an ad somewhere in your podcast, and then your 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 end roll is going to be at the end. Your podcast is over, and then there's going to be a little jingle and an advertisement. Hey, thanks for listening to Thursday Thoughts Podcast, brought to you by whatever. Go to whatever.com for more information. So those are different types of inserts that you would put uh, in your podcast. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Going back to something we were talking about before, with you know, we know that you know the big names in podcasting, and why would you want to be on some of these other platforms? I think this advertising piece relates back to that topic. That if you're planning on selling advertising, you want your name everywhere, you, or you want your podcast everywhere, because even if a particular platform doesn't seem perfect for you, who's to say that it might not be appropriate for a future advertiser? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Ooh. Really good qu uh, question, or I guess kind of comment question we had from from Daryl Lee. So I'll put the first part up because she wrote there are some podcasts that are produced by platforms like Spotify, um, but then those podcasts are distributed by other platforms. Why would that be? And kind of I guess the the meat and potatoes of it was meaning wouldn't the other platforms not want to advertise a competitor? So this is the this is the kind of it's a funny thing and a and a cool thing with podcasts. Uh, there's no competing. There's no competition with podcasts. You know why? You can listen to all of them. You can listen to all of them whenever you want. There's no competition. It's not like I'm on at one o'clock in the afternoon and Zach, you're on at one o'clock in the afternoon and Kevin, you're on at one o'clock in the afternoon. And every day I'm fighting tooth and nail to make sure that my audience stays with me and doesn't go to you. Or I'm trying to steal your audience and put on better guests and better content and better promotions and better giveaways because I don't want them listening to you. I want them listening to me. With right. podcasting, there's no competition. Listen to them all. You can listen to mine. You can listen to yours. I don't care. doesn't matter. As long as you're listening to mine, I'm getting what I'm getting out of it. You can listen to whatever you want. And there's people that listen to everything, which is great. And yes, I, I mentioned before when, when, a company like Spotify has exclusive deals with companies. Um, you'll get every episode on their platform, but only a certain number of episodes on other platforms. And what they're trying to do is, hey, and there'll be a reader in those ads as well. There'll be ads in those podcasts or readers saying, right. for the full library of podcast episodes, be sure to follow us on Spotify. Got it. Got it. I like the, I like the teasing uh, element there to yeah. that. No, that's great. That's um, there's no, there's no competition in podcasts. You can listen. People listen to. You can listen to all of them. I love it. Um, we're going to kind of get through this last uh, little slide here for you, rather, rather quickly, because we have a couple questions we want to touch on. But um, just real briefly, let's tell folks what they need to get started. Um, and I think the big thing here is like a lot of people think, oh, I'm don't have a podcast, it's my company and podcast. But even kind of how you see that we did at Navitas Marketing, we called this Thursday Thoughts. And there's a reason for it. It's we want to bring on thought leaders. We do it on Thursdays. <laughs> you know, there's some effort that went into that. So let's talk a little bit about the name and how you select it. Um, the concept and flow of your podcast, which we touched on a little bit earlier, but that's kind of like, are you going interview style? Are you doing it short form? Are they longer podcasts? And then this question that people ask me all the time, which I never have a quality answer to, um, do you use a mic or do you not use a mic? And seeing as how clearly you have a, an awesome mic in front of you, <laughs> you showed me headphones earlier, you could have came here even more decked out. Um, give us some thoughts towards uh, towards naming, towards um, flow and, and, and should I buy a microphone? So you want to have a clever name that you want to attract people's attentions when they read it, right? Uh, Thursday Thoughts is great. Why? It's alliteration, right? Everybody loves alliteration. Um, you want to have a name that stands out. You also want to have a name that's unique. The worst thing you can do is name your podcast something. Go on Apple Podcasts, search for your podcast, and find 50 other podcasts with the same name. It's not going to be good because you're not going to stand out and people aren't going to find you. 
So you want to make sure that your name is somewhat original. And, and I go through that process when I work with my uh, podcasters is I'll sit there and I'll just search and Google podcast names until I find one that's, you know, pretty, uh, you know, uh, unique, um, just so you're not duplicating. So when you say, when you tell people to go, Hey, search for your podcast, they'll find you and they won't find some other company with the same name. And there are a lot of podcasts out there with the same name. Uh, uh, going with that artwork is very important. That's something that I also provide with my podcast company is I'll do your artwork for you. You want to have a creative podcast logo that's going to stand out because people are going to be scrolling on their phones or they're going to be scrolling on you know their computers. You want that artwork to pop, stand out, and direct people to your episode. Okay. You know, that little square where you're just looking, just, just look at the iTunes charts. You want to have, you want to have some artwork that stands out, not just your company logo. You want to kind of tell your story and kind of, you know, you know, be flamboyant, you know, be flashy, if you will, a little bit right. with your, with your artwork there. As far as flow and time, the time is going to be dictated by your content. You never want a podcast to be too long and you never want a podcast to be too short. If you have 20 minutes of solid content, that podcast should only be about 20 minutes long. You don't want a 40 minute episode, but only 20 minutes of solid content. Cut out all that banter, cut out all that, you know, unnecessary stuff and just get to the 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 meat. Just the get to the content. Um, I was listening to a, a Bon Jovi interview um, months and months ago, and he had a great line. And I think he attributed it to, to somebody else. But when creating a song, he said, don't bore us, get to the chorus. Right. And if you think about some of the Bon Jovi, great Bon Jovi songs, they start right away with the chorus. Right. You know, shot through the heart, whatever. So it's don't, don't bore us, get to the chorus. And that's can that can apply to podcasting or even radio shows or TV shows or anything is don't dilly dally. Don't delay anything. Get right to the meat. Get right to the subject. The audience is hungry. You got to feed them, baby. You don't want to tease them. You, 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 this isn't radio radio. You want to keep dr you know dragging people along and dragging people along so you can earn each quarter hour of, of listenership, right? Because you're trying to get radio ratings podcasts. You don't have to worry about that. You're not trying to drag people along because if, if you drag, they're just going to turn you off. So you really got to get to the meat of the conversation, get to the content and keep your podcast length, the appropriate length of your content. Uh, I'd say the average podcast, the, the uh, 20 minutes is perfect. It's, it's a great length. You don't need to go uh, longer than that. If the content is not there, if it is there, Fine, 30, 40 minutes. Don't go longer than that uh, unless you're someone like Joe Rogan and you have a great in-studio guest and you're going to be talking to them for an hour and a half. No one's going to listen to the entire podcast episode uh, where if it's an hour long. I always say between 20 and 40 minutes is the perfect podcast length. That's the average length of commute of people going to work when they were going to work uh, in, 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 in offices. And that's usually when you get people listening to podcasts, which is on their commutes. Got it. I, I would think the data, you know, you, you, I believe, and you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, you know, you can see all the data of the listeners and how long they're listening to your podcast. So if you have what you think is the perfect 30 minute podcast and you see that everyone's getting bored after 20 minutes, maybe that tells you something you need to yep. shorten it. A little bit. Yes, I would say the length, and, and again, the length of your content has to be, uh, the length of your podcast has to be the length of your content. You never want to go too long because you have nothing else to talk about. And you never want to go too short because you didn't talk enough. Mm -hmm. So it's it's whatever, you know, good content's gonna drive your your listenership every every um, scary flashbacks back to you know grade school and you know you ask how long is this report or essay supposed to be, and they tell you as long Five as pages. <laughs> and you're all nervous, you know, is it too short? Is it too long? I really don't mm -hmm. know what for it. that's when you use that's when you use courier new and double space so it's, uh, right <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I never played that trick i don't know uh, what you're i swear about. my margin game was, <laughs> yeah. uh, i was moving in like two three millimeters with each yeah side. yeah, yeah. Uh, i i got that extra four or five lines and made that's it look fantastic uh, no that, this is awesome stuff guys um so last but not least does someone who wants to do their own podcast need to go out and buy what I see in your screen? That awesome. Oh, yeah. So my, yeah, microphones you mentioned. Uh, I, I'm I'm an audiophile. Like, no, I'm not an MP3. Uh, I am like somebody who uh, is very, you know, I'm very into the sound of things. Um, 
a microphone is always the best way to go. There are cheap options out there. You don't have to get an expensive one like this. Um, you can go a cheaper route. Even uh, uh, great microphones are actually cheaper now. You can get a great, great podcast microphone from a company like Rode for like $150. That's not a lot of money if you want a professional setup for your podcast, professional sound for your podcast. Uh, you also have to worry about where you're podcasting from, you know, as far as echo in your room, which is referred to as reverb in the uh, audio industry. Uh, you don't want a lot of echo. You don't want a lot of background noise, which can be annoying. Um, and you, you really want to make sure that you're not capturing any feedback. So you want to make sure that you have headphones on as opposed to somebody else's voice then going through your microphone and back into your recording device. But really, all you need is a microphone and a, and a recording device like your computer. Um, prof more professional setups require some sort of external mixer. Uh, if you're going to have multiple mic setups and maybe guests on the phone and things like that. But I have done podcasts every single way. I've done them through programs like StreamYard. I've done them through Zoom, Skype conversations, phone calls. Uh, and there's always a way to get the recording done. And the best part about some of the services that I provide to my clients is the editing process because people can certainly grab a microphone and record into their computer or even record into a recording program. Like uh, they don't need a software like Adobe Audition or Audacity or something like that. There's always, there, there are podcast uh, services like Anchor and Zencaster that you could just record your podcast through them and then download the audio tracks when you're done and upload it to whatever service you want to upload it to. Uh, but again, the editing process is really where the professionalism comes into play because I'll make your podcast sound professional. I'm going to take out all that background noise. I'm going to, you know, make sure that your voices are the same uh, volume level. We're going to take out the gaps, the us and the ums that occur throughout the course of a conversation. It's a fine editing line because you want to leave in some because you want the conversation to sound natural. Nobody is perfect talking, so you want it to sound somewhat natural, but you also do have to take out, I would say, 40 to 50% of it because you don't want that podcast to drag on and become very boring because the host keeps pausing and going, uh, and um, and uh, right. uh, uh, people, a lot of people have um, vocal crutches that they use all the time. People say like a lot. People say, I mean a lot, or I know a lot. Uh, and that's something that as an editor, you can take out as well to make the conversation flow and not sound uh, really monotonous or not sound so, uh, so bulky. If you I'm an, I'm an ummer. Okay. So like I've even had to write, don't say, um, on a piece of paper and put it next to my camera on my laptop. I've had to write to people. Don't say, I mean, because yeah. there's a large population of people. And when I listen to radio shows now, it burns me inside when I hear hosts say, I mean, I mean, Zach, it's like, you know, this, I mean, <laughs> it kills me. Stop saying, I mean, we know what you mean. You're saying we know what Stop you saying. mean. <laughs> um, awesome. Awesome. So we got a couple comments and just one or two questions we want to get to. Like, clearly, we're giving great information because uh, we've had anywhere from six to 10 people in here watching live. And we're we're over an hour at this point. So, I mean, in terms of quality content, we would have a long podcast and people would watch the whole thing. So I'm, I'm We'd excited. We'd also about cut that. out a little bit of the a little bit, too. So this hour would probably be more like 40 minutes. Fair. <laughs> um, one thing I'll actually, you know what? And we I'll give a quick shout out because she did leave it in the comments because um, I've, I've worked with Daryl on some of her stuff. So uh, she has the Demystifying Diversity podcast. Um, and Anna Marie Jones is her colleague and, and, and partner on that. Um, I've recently joined to help them out, you know, with some of the more marketing stuff that they do. Um, but she, she put a link in there. So quick shout out to them. And again, um, I like the alliteration, demystifying diversity, uh, I like the way that sounds and feels. Yeah. And of course, that's a, a podcast that really highlights DEI and diversity topics. Um, so thanks you guys for, for checking out and joining. Um, we did have an early bird question. Uh, how many episodes should you produce in advance before publishing a podcast? And clearly that probably relates to how frequently your podcast is going to be. Yep. Um, but I think that that's an interesting question. Like before you jump into it for the first time, mm -hmm. how prepared do you need to be on a content side? 
Uh, it's just total preference. Um, I have had podcasts that, you know, and I, I always say you got to do at least twice a month, once a month, you're not going to gain any traction. Right. And if you want to do once a week, I think that's a tough ask for somebody just getting started, because if you're going to do once a week, you have to commit to doing one a week. And if you're not going to, if you're going to skip a week, you lose that credibility with your audience and people are not going to find you as much as they were finding you if you do commit to doing one a week. So I recommend people starting out with twice a month and then going to once a week if you want, but twice a month is good. You know, you could do a bi-monthly, a bi-weekly episode, whatever you want to do. If you're going to do something like that, just two episodes a month, you don't need to do any pre-recording episodes. You can just record one episode and then the next week record another one and then, then, then record another one. If you're going to do a weekly podcast, I would, I would get a couple episodes done. Because gotcha. like I said, you have to commit to having it out every single week and things come up and sometimes you're not able to record that week. You might be under the weather, uh, it might be a holiday or something, but you committed to having a podcast episode release every Wednesday or whatever. So you better have a podcast episode that releases every Wednesday. And that's when it becomes a good idea to kind of have a couple of episodes recorded in advance so that you could build that schedule of releasing a podcast every single week while recording new ones at the same time. But if you're going to do twice a month, you don't need to record a, a bunch at the same time. Got you. Got you. And, well, and I'll put even more yeah. emphasis on that. I'm sorry. What'd you say, Kevin? I was going to say, I, I'd like to piggyback off that question. Cause I know this is something we get asked a lot. Um, how long does it take from the initial recording of the podcast to actually do the editing and get it distributed on the different platforms? Uh, How many time do you need? Well, it depends who's doing it for you. Uh, <laughs> someone, you so. someone like myself, I'll, I can do it same day. Uh, other people might not. Uh, uh, it, it depends. It depends on the demand. It depends on the schedule. But as far as, you know, I can record your pod. I can record this podcast now. I can edit it and have it up within the hour. Right. <laughs> one, one thing I would put on that in terms of preparing is also if you guys are going to be doing a video podcast, that's more editing. Um, and right. it, it could be an editing skill set that, you know, whoever you have doesn't have and you need another person on board to help. So you got to put all that into consideration uh, before you you launch a podcast. I can definitely, you know, speak for Kevin that we're, we're happy that we started working with Scott on the Navitas side because we have clients who have questions about podcasting or need help producing it. And, you know, we have some skills, but not like Scott. So we were like, all right, let's get him in house so we can really open this podcasting door for all these folks that we've been connecting with and working with. So we're super excited to have him uh, as a part of the team. Um, we have one more question here I'll throw on board and we'll kind of close with this one uh, from Darylise. Thank you for all the questions today, Darylise. I, I love having some yes, thank you. viewers. Um, she's asking about show notes. Do you recommend a recap or a transcript? Uh, well, is it for your own personal use or are you distributing this somewhere? I'm going to, I'm going to assume she means for distribution. Does that help people get engaged with your podcast? Is there a tangible benefit to providing that? So I like certain, if you're going to get into certain topics at certain points, uh, I like being able to have those notes readily available and giving the audience those notes so that they know they could fast forward to certain aspects. I do this at times with my football uh, gambling show, right? The football betting show. We talk about, you know, six college football games on a Saturday and 10 NFL games on a Sunday. That's 16 games that we're talking about. Well, you know what? I'll take the show notes down and I'll put it out on social media that say, hey, at 11 1134, we're talking about Jets versus Patriots. At 11, you know, 57, we're talking about this game. So people can kind of fast forward to that timestamp and get the game that they want to listen to for the breakdown. That, that uh, only 20 seconds for Jets Patriots sounds about right. Well, yeah, pretty uh. much. <laughs> uh, but you, you get the idea. It's kind of giving yeah. the audience a timestamp of where their podcast is going. A uh, full transcript, verbatim, word for word. There are softwares that do that, that you can get, that you can transcribe your entire podcast. Like I said, people use that for blogs. Um, but just bless you. But just by having a, a certain you know type of some show notes that you can put out there as a part of your promotion for your episode, because you're also going to write your show notes in your description of your podcast, right? When you publish your podcast episode, there's going to be a little blurb about what that episode is. 
And so maybe your notes go a little bit beyond that short blurb and just you can post that and tell people when you promote it on social media and say, hey, a uh, new episode of Thursday Thoughts is out. We talked about podcasting. Some of the things we talked about were blank, 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 blank. And then you can you know put that out there. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well, um, this has been a wealth of knowledge, uh, Scott. Uh, I'd really appreciate you spending the time to chat with Kevin and I and, of course, our viewers. Um, uh, Kevin, any any last uh, comments or thoughts uh, before we, uh, we we close out and let Scott go? Well, I, I think this is the, uh, the the least that I have spoken in one of our Thursday thoughts yet. Um, <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you're a professional speaker. Uh, you know, onto Thursday thoughts, and Zach, I have a feeling you did that purposely just to just to keep me quiet when you invited Scott. Yeah. But no, the the, the information uh, that you provided, Scott, was incredible, and I know I, I know a lot of our audience uh, will will definitely find value in that. And, you know, I, I kept kind of linking back some of your comments to other areas of marketing, and it's just you know it's just cool how so much of this, you know, you may be changing your your end audience, you know, but but so much so much of it applies to other types of marketing, other types of content that mm -hmm. you know people businesses are already putting out there, which I think is uh, you know, it's really cool. Awesome, awesome. You glitched out a tiny bit on me at the end, but we we made it through, uh, Kevin. Um, yeah. so again, thank you all for yeah. tuning in and watching today. Um, this will be up on the Navitas marketing YouTube pages. Um, and of course we'll share it on LinkedIn. We'll share it on Facebook. We want folks to really get this knowledge, uh, and reach out to us. So you see at the bottom, we do offer free 30 minute consultations, uh, for any business, any entrepreneur, anyone that needs some, some assistance growing their brand. Um, and if you end up talking about podcasting, we are going to send you right to our boy, Scott. And uh, Scott, can you give the people just a quick insight of where they can follow you, where they can find you, uh, your, your, your WWW for us? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's real simple. You can go, you see it behind me. Scott'sonair.com is the easiest way to, to find me. My website is there. All the podcasting information is there, as well as my on-air work uh, through various sports talk outlets. Um, I'm on Twitter, same thing, at Scott's On Air, all across social media, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, LinkedIn would just be my name, Scott Seidenberg. Uh, but yeah, you can check out Scott'sOnAir.com is the easiest way for, to get access to everything. And just for the record, his favorite show he's ever done was Hit Him High with Seth Joyner. Absolutely, especially when <laughs> Seth gets very angry, bangs the table, and scares me. <laughs> it scares all of us <laughs> on set. Um, so no, this was a great show. Yeah, season. Right, 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 right. Um, so again, thanks everybody for watching and checking us out. Um, we have two upcoming Thursday thoughts. Um, in two weeks, we have uh, Amanda Dempsey uh, from Kent Franchise Law. She will be talking about franchising and everything you need to know, uh, the ins and outs uh, of that world. And then on February 11th, we have one of my mentors coming, uh, Jen Groover. She's gonna be talking about mastering your mind in uncertain times. So this is a great uh, topic to have uh, dealing with everything that we're dealing with in this country. Uh, so I'm really excited for her, excited for, for both of them. Um, and before we go, I will actually throw one more thing uh, out here. Uh, today's a very special day. January 14th happens to be my niece's birthday. Yeah. She turns three today. Um, she is not yet old enough to be embarrassed. So <laughs> we'll her. she'll just think it's cute and uh, won't care that much. But I think a few years down the line, I'll, I'll do some stuff like this and, and you know, I'll, I'll hear about it. Um, but look forward to partying with her this weekend. And again, thanks everybody for watching and uh, hopefully we'll see you in two weeks for uh which we'll right there, franchising 101. See you guys soon. Thanks, Scott. Thank you.